It's time to do the body work on this 1978 Ford F-150 and lay down a really nice paint job, but we're gonna do this on a budget, of course. My friend Kevin Tetz has offered to help, and he said for about $180 a gallon, we're gonna be able to lay down a really nice, respectable paint job on this, and he's gonna show a bunch of tips and tricks and educate us on the way, so of course I gotta bring you with. We're gonna be doing the body work over at his shop, and he even mentioned potentially rolling this into his paint booth, which should be a lot of fun. But first, I've got to get this truck somewhat stripped and prepped and on a trailer and over to his place. So let's start by tearing everything off this truck we can that we don't want paint on it. Bentley, you're helping? Yep. Yes. Got my youngest human Bentley here. I think I'm gonna try to figure out the heavy stuff, the bumpers. Do you wanna keep taking off those things? Yeah, I'll just take off all the side markers, taillights, these headlight covers, just stuff like this, and then I'll just tape all the screws to the back of them. Oh, smart, so we don't lose all the screws and yeah. stuff. I think I've got some new marker stuff coming, but I don't think I have the hardware pack. So yeah, good idea on the screws and stuff. While you're doing that, I'll crawl into the front here and just see if we can get this off. I'm gonna go ahead and put a new bumper on the rig and a new rear bumper, different style, but it doesn't mean these are necessarily bad. So I'm gonna try to take them off gently. And I'm a hoarder. We'll put them, we'll put them somewhere. So the basic idea here is just get, you know, the bumper, the tin front off, the, the side markers, all that stuff, the badges, mirrors, we'll get the locks out. All the stuff that kind of gets in the way when we're doing body work and paint and uh, try to get this thing, you know, prep for just hitting it with sanders and get this thing primed and sealed as fast as we can. We got a big clobber here we got to try to take out. Uh, I think he's got one of those zzz, zzz, stud gun things and you can yank and pull on it. And then there's some dings, you know, we're going to be working on. I'm probably going to put some bed rails on it so we don't have to go completely nuts. I want this truck to look really sharp, but I don't want it so darn nice that whoever wins it is afraid to use the thing. You know what I mean? We'll get the tail lights out of here. We'll get the rear bumper off. If things are going really well tonight, we'll lift this up and actually unbolt the bed as well. And I'll just have to strap that down on the trailer. Don't let me forget. I'll forget. That'll be interesting because we're going to want to slide this back when we paint so we can get the back of the cab and the, and the front of the bed as well. All right, how you coming, bud? I have a weird connector to do that too. Ah, uh, just twist on it. Oh. There you go. Connector do dab. <laughs> I don't know what they're so I'm just gonna get my teeth in here and see if I can knock these four nuts off. Bentley's here to help, so after this falls on my neck, then just pull it off, okay? <laughs> Rust in my teeth. Rust in my teeth. It's been a while. No, nope. two days. Can you push down on that bolt? What bolt? Oh, yeah. Good job. Can you do the same over here? Mm. Good job, Dose. Thanks. Can you do the same over here? To this flat one? Yep. What's after Dose? Trace. Good job. What's after Trace? Cinco. Quattro. Oh, I have a Ow. You okay? Yeah. Just, just do it harder. Grit your teeth this time. Oh. Okay. You should be able to just lift this right off. This will work. 
Thanks, Scooby. Mm -hmm. I was up front working on the grill and Bentley said he found a surprise. I took off this tail light. The screwdriver was jammed in here. Like that. <laughs> this must have a huge hole in it or something. Oh, it does. The bottom's gone. Huh, they must have beat the bottom of the steak pocket out. I was wondering where that went. Yeah. We can use it on the badges. You're on to the tail lights. You got the side markers off. You want to get these mirrors too? Yeah, I'll get those after all the side markers. Okay. Easy, but faster. Boom. So I'm up here working. Looks like just these two screws, I just ran them back in, but that's what holds that guy in. And then we've got two bolts up here. It looks like that, this, that, that, and that. And maybe this whole entire this maybe this whole get up would come off which would be nice oh no 79 bolts inside the fender why 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 <sighs> that's why i had to put glasses on <laughs> Yeah, these bolts coming out, they're just dumping years of dirt. No wonder that wasn't rusted out. Oh, here's the bolt. Yeah. Be sure you open your mouth when you pull the trigger. <laughs> so apparently you got to take the entire cab off to get the front grill out. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Okay, that one's flopping down better than this one. So now we gotta reach all the way up in here with 75 foot extensions and wobblers to try to get those three bolts out, which are gonna snap, I'm sure. Yep. It almost flips you upside down. We're going to take the tire off so we can get our faces up in here so that way it's more dangerous, you know. Think you can lift the tire off? There you go, and then just jerk with your back. Good job, dude. Don't worry about that. Okay. Now, <laughs> way up in there. Perfect. We got these three out finally on both sides. This side, one of the speed nuts was just rotted. So we used the best tool in the world of ice grip. Just clamped around there. There. We got these three on the bottom and then we'll lower it down again and attack the top. This one's not terrible, but it does have some dents in it. And uh, I just think it would look really nice having a clean front, so that's what we're gonna do anyway. Oh, you got it. Yeah, thanks buddy. Well, we definitely got to hit all this with the 1634 before that goes back together. Flappage. Leverage. What are these it's flappage. I don't know. What, was it, what were they trying to do? Hard to say. This can come out. We don't need that. Do you want to take this bolt out there? This one? Yeah. Okay, what size is the um, That would be a 3 8 Maybe get that out as well. I think we'll probably take the headlights out too. I might put some retro brights in this. So a guy can see Bentley. Yep. 
Well, little man and I have pretty well got her stripped down, front and rear bumpers off, all of the reflectors and blinky doos, the front is pretty much stripped. So tomorrow, gonna roll this on a trailer, hook up a rig, whichever one has a license plate and half tank gas, head over to Kevin's, get this into his shop, and just start getting into the body work on this thing. It is gonna be a mad dash. I think we've got three days. Try to get this thing just looking sharp. See you in the morning. Just a quick reminder, you can enter for a chance to win this beautiful Ford F100 now through March 15th. And don't worry, a guy will have it all put together, spiffed up and roadworthy by then. All you gotta do is go to vicegripgarage.com, pick yourself up anything you choose there and every $5 you spend gives you one entry for a chance to win that truck. And what's that mean? We've never really explained that, an entry. Well, it's very simple. For example, if you pick up some of the Shine Juice, that's 11 entries for a chance to win. If you get yourself some clear coat, that's 25 entries for a chance to win. Or these hood savers right here, that's 12. We have so many dozens and dozens of items and a ton of different shirts. Most of these are worth five entries. Speaking of shirts, check out these new shop shirts, two new colors and a new design. It's my new favorite back rag. And Jessica's here to talk to you a little bit more about some other options. As a reminder, these items sell out very quickly during these giveaways. We are not gonna be doing a multiplier, so don't procrastinate. We have lots of items available on the website, but these are a few of the things that we have really good stock in right now. We have the Youth Little Grip Garage shirt. This will get you five entries. The Zip Up hoodie will get you seven entries. This is the new Button Up Shop shirt. Derek was wearing it in gray, also available in navy. We have the Derekism shirt. This one is available in this navy. I'm wearing it in white. It also comes in gray. If you guys can't choose something, hit the mystery bundle and let us choose for you. You get two shirts with that. There's also all kinds of other things available. There's still keychains, stickers, can koozies. We just got another shipment of the coffee tumblers in. Uh, thank you guys again so much for supporting us. We really appreciate it so much. We're so excited for somebody to win this beautiful Ford. Good luck. Well, good morning. Coming to you live and hot from my friend Kevin Tate's place. Uh, this is where the magic's gonna happen. We're gonna do body and paint work here. And Kevin, thanks for having us, man. I know you're super busy. I love these great. trucks. I love them. Yeah, you did one on a show, right? Uh, I'm one or 200 on a, yeah. show, on a show that happened to be called Trucks, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But I had a girlfriend in high school that had a 79 with the 400 amp motor in it, and okay. I just have such fond memories of that truck. I had one, a two-tone red and white one, years and years ago. I love these trucks. I love the body style of them, and uh, it's gonna be fun to work on. Awesome, so we're in the right place. So if you don't know who Kevin is, take a look around, my friend. You're living under a huge rock. <laughs> uh, Kevin has been a TV host and on shows for years and years and years amongst millions of other things. You're a very busy man. But what it boils down to, he's an automotive enthusiast, he's a builder, and well, he's an educator. So I'm super happy to be here to learn from him. As you guys know, I'm kind of a backyard body guy. I've learned some bad habits over the years. Kevin's gonna try to strangle them out of me a little bit, maybe. Well, well the way I put it is that you've already got a good knife. We're just gonna sharpen the blade just a little bit. There you go, yeah. that's awesome. So we're gonna spend a day or two of body work on this rig. Um, Kevin's gonna help us just figure out, you know, here's probably how you should do it. Here's a way you could do it. You could get by doing it this way and maybe don't do it this way, Derek. Yeah, there's some don'ts, for yeah. sure, for sure. <laughs> but basically, 30,000 foot view, what we're gonna do is figure out where the damage is. We're going to fix and body work it. We're gonna prime it, block it, and then from there, uh, prep the rest of the body, the paint that doesn't need any body work, which there's a lot on this truck. It's in good shape. It's in really good, I'm so glad you brought me a rust-free body. Because <laughs> yeah. that brings you down a rabbit. You don't never know what you're gonna right. uncover. But this is fairly straightforward. We're gonna body work it, prime it, prep it, and then roll it up the hill. I've got a spray booth. We're gonna spray it in the booth. We're gonna awesome. use some uh, accessible, low-cost materials that are gonna give this thing a brilliant paint job. That's awesome. So that's our goal. If you guys are worried, biting your lip going, great, here's a $10,000 paint job. No, that's not our goal. Kevin's gonna show us how to do the best we can with what we've got. And there's some low cost options out there. Yeah. And in fact, I'll show you one of the cars he did for around $900-ish. In materials, yeah. 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 And so. granted, it's about a third the size of this one, but it, <laughs> yeah. it, but it looks good and it was with inexpensive materials. So you can, you can get there from here. You could do a really nice paint job and whoever gets this truck is gonna get a really nice paint job on it. Um, 
fired up about this, super excited. And we get to paint in a booth, I think, for the first time in many, many years. <laughs> Probably your first time ever seeing it on the channel. It's going to be a lot of fun. So where do we start? We need to start sanding, huh? Um, no, we don't. Oh, okay. We start, I'm going to give you a Sharpie. Okay. And I'm going to get a Sharpie. We're going to put a little circle around every dent on this body. Do you got more markers? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. I got a case of them. Okay. Yeah, I call this a dent map. And you got to know where you're starting from. You got to know what, what's ahead of you. And then you slowly, methodically go around and we'll start doing body work. Okay, sounds good. While he starts markering, I'm going to walk you around this car super quick to get you guys fired up. And then I got to find more markers. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the car Kevin put together. And we're going to use the same idea here. This is a single stage paint fellers and fillets. The final coat has a little bit of clear mixed in it, and that's one of his little tricks he's going to show us. We're going to do the same thing on the F100 that's going to have this beautiful, brilliant shine. This car is nuts. It's a LS swapped, right? With a six speed? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Supercharged. Supercharged. Beautiful little car. So when I say Kevin builds any paints, I'm not messing around. And C Tane and Zed Sled and all these other beautiful cars he's done over the years. Here's the money maker. That thing is stuffed in there. It's an LS1 out of an 04 GTO. It's got an LSA blower on it, seven pounds of boost, and we're thinking it makes about 525 at the crank. It's 440 <laughs> at the wheel. So an LS powered go kart, basically. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. I found one, Kevin. It's right here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> All so right. The reason we're going around and marking this, this while there's still a little bit of gloss on the paint is because we can look at it at an angle and you can see where the dents are. Straight on, it's flat, I can't tell. If I find my light, if I bounce my light over here, I can see that there's a dent right there. So that's a simple little trick. Like I said, I call this a dent map. There's one, there's one. Because when we put shiny paint on this, if we miss those dents, they're going to pop out. They're going to jump out of this. We don't want that. Yeah, so this is a mistake I've already been making because normally I just start sanding and then look for highs and lows when I'm sanding, but this is probably a better way because you might miss some that way if they're really shallow low or something like exactly. that. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And you, you can't, typically you can, you can find them all eventually, but it's going to break your heart if you find them when you're spraying your second coat of clear or paint. <laughs> right. You know, and that's not what you want to do. Paintless dent repair is a real thing, and I respect those guys, but I want to get my body work done before we spray the shiny stuff. Right. Check this out. This is really cool. Hinges on the back side. Stop her here. So now we can put a prop rod on. Find a safe one. Now we can prep the underside and the top side at the same time. We can paint them at the same time. So we save time on. Uh, masking, we save money on masking, and we don't have any tape lines that look bad when you pop the hood. That's awesome. Sometimes the right tool is the tool to have. This is pretty great. We would have been hanging this off the forks on the tractor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a tractor. I got one of these stands. Yeah. Boy, the hood's not bad. No, it's not bad, is it? There's a little dent here. I don't have my marker on me. Um, I lost my money wore out. <laughs> Right there. This crown looks a little low. All right, so here's another trick. If you don't have a glossy surface, you can take, it's a wax and grease remover. It's a body shop product. It's a mild solvent that stays wet for a long time. So if you don't have any of this stuff, you guys at home, you can go to a home center or a tractor supply. You can get something called naphtha. It's a mild solvent. It, it works very well as a substitute. But this is a wax and grease remover out of the body shop. Quick wet. And this stuff stays wet a long time. And essentially, it replaces the gloss oh, yeah. of the dead paint. Now we can look and we can do our dent map. And here's the cool thing, a little pop knot right there. I can write through this with my Sharpie huh. and it stays. So when this stuff flashes off, now I know where my dents are. I'll be dipped. Look at that. 
Would this be something you would do when you think you got a body worked and hey, I'm ready to go, it's perfect. Would you do this on that just to make sure? Absolutely, absolutely. No, this absolutely, when you get a uh, body worked and primed, if you're looking for waves in a panel, if you're doing a, something that you want really flat and really nice, you always wet check it. It's another tool, it's almost a free tool. It's a surface analysis tool to use big words, but it gives us a chance to look at it on how it would look with the reflective qualities of the finished paint without committing to the finished paint. This will, it, it's just a way to make sure that we're ready for paint. So my big quote is, painting, spraying the paint is a reward for all the hard work you did underneath it on the bodywork. So we wanna create that. We wanna create a super flat surface that's gonna take the paint and show us back, give us that lens into the hard work that we put into the body. Nice. What you doing with the rear window here? So obviously the seal is cracked. We're gonna replace it anyways. We don't wanna tape around this because we're gonna get a tape build up there. It's gonna look cheesy. We want to take the glass out, do it right. However, if we leave the glass in, we're not gonna get a bunch of body filler dust and primer on the brand new restored interior. So we're trimming the edge out. We're gonna leave the glass in, we're gonna mask around it, and when we put the new seal in, it's gonna go over top of that paint edge and look like it did when it came from the factory. Well, that is rotten too, isn't it? And shrunk. Yes, terrible. Look at this. Oh, wow. It's just done. But right now, we've got access. The paint's going to roll underneath the trim, and Bob's your uncle's going to look great. So, walking around this right now, just cleaning it up. We're using some uh, glass cleaner and rags, and just trying to get some more of this grime and filth. We pressure washed it and wiped it down already, but it just keeps coming. You guys remember how dirty this truck was when we first got it? It was green. It was just full of lichen like lichen. Look, it looked like the Mayflower. It was just not even close to this. And unfortunately, a lot of that filth is still in here. So we're trying to get as much out as we can. Obviously, it's going to get dirty and dusty and everything like that. But we don't need to be grinding dirt and film and junk into the paint or anything like that. And also clogging the clogging the paper up. Man, this truck is straight. Look at that cab corner. It's wild. We got antenna things. Antenna things. So we got a long wire. This goes underneath and fishes up to the back of the radio. I want to take this off, but it you can't disconnect it there. This trim piece, I don't want a paint line around there. So I've got a piece of mechanics wire taped on the back of this. Oops, sorry, just about hit, hit Derek. So what we're going to do, get our mechanics wire, we'll loop it on one of these screw holes, tape over it, and then we're going to put the antenna back in because this guy's going to want a radio. We just fish the mechanics wire. This comes from my years in collision repair. We had to figure out how to do this stuff. So <laughs> That's this is genius. Cool, yeah, it's a cool trick to pass on for wiring harness and stuff like that. Mechanics wire is your friend. Man, I would have been fighting for a week trying to get that back in there somehow. Yeah, I know all you fellers and fellas got your eyes on this big clobber. I think it was a tree or something that must have come down on it. We got a deep one here and some on the bed rail over here. It's going to be very interesting and educational to watch Kevin work his magic on that. And... I make no promises. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll do something one way or another. This is going to be like that. I think we're about ready. Got the tailgate off, uh, got the handle lubricated. This actually is doing handle things now. Oh, it springs back on its own. Heck yeah, man. So that's pretty neat. This tailgate's straight too. Can you believe it? There's kind of one little... Little bit, little bit. But it's original paint. That's what blows me away. It, the original paint is in such good shape. This thing is, it's, it's old and it's just such a nice treat. To work on top of something that hadn't been painted 7 11 times you know? <laughs> yeah. kevin's got yet another tip or trick for us here so derek beat me to it on the front glass there's the new seal in there and again we don't want paint to bridge over there that's right there on the most visible panel on the vehicle so what we're going to do is just take some vacuum line and you can see what it does it lifts that lip up so the paint's going to dive underneath when we pull this off after the paint's cured when we unmask the truck, it comes over there, lays over, and we don't have overspray. It's the little things that matter, and that, that looks like a quality job, right? We don't want that paint to bridge, because as paint gets old, it shrinks, and it's going to reveal something there, or we're going to have to clean overspray off of this rubber. Yeah, I completely agree. You can see some pretty decent paint jobs, and you see all the overspray on the rubber, and it just kind of makes it look a little cheesy, doesn't it? 
So that's a pretty good tip there. Here's my saying, and I've invented this. We control what we can control so we can manage what we can't control. This is controllable. <laughs> <laughs> so while he's doing that, I'm going to be using the die grinder here and we'll be going into the, some of the deeper ones like this that we're going to use the stud gut on. We need some fresh metal for that because essentially we're we're welding a pin or a stud to this metal. So I'm going to go around and clean up some of these bigger ones and get prepped for that. We'll leave the outline of the dent here, but we're just going to kind of clean in the centers. You can actually get to the back side of this one. Eyes closed and feel. <laughs> That's the Kimosabi move? It's the Stevie Wonder bodywork move. <laughs> yeah, we're still low right there. So Kevin's got this UFO looking thing out and a bunch of copper. What do you got going on? So it's a stud puller. Old school is we drill an eighth inch hole in here, a threaded slide hammer like this. And that's the reason when you strip Bondo off of cars that were fixed in the 60s and 70s, you see a bunch of holes along the low crease. This is one step better. It welds a brass stud to the low part of the dent. That's why we had to uh, grind it down to metal because you can't weld to paint, right? So. When you're looking at a dent like this, we've got a circle around it that is actually very close to where the actual damage is. When you think about it, I'm a visual guy. So I visualize tossing a pebble into a clear pond. The moment the pebble hits the pond, and then think about that freezing in time, freeze frame. So you've got the wave out around. That's literally what happens with sheet metal. It's a, it's a pebble in the pond suspended, the ripple extends out to here. So the reason we want to pull the center out have to redo that one. But what it does is it pulls the pressure out here. Then we follow along and we chase the shoulder down. It releases the tension that's locked in to that freeze frame all the way around the dent. And then you slowly work it back up to where the middle part comes out. You don't want to use brute force, you want to use gentle pressure. My saying is we have to ask the dent nicely to come out. We have to be polite with it. So I, I cover all this in my Paint Education University courses, but that's just a quick snapshot of what happens with a dent and kind of why we go from the middle out and just do the love taps around the outside. It just brings it back to its cell memory position and it wants to go back straight. So it's a give and take relationship. You gotta, if you're gonna take some out, you gotta give some back, right? So you're, you're pushing in while pulling to get that back flat again. Yes, and with this one, Farmer John really gave to this one. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I think you're right. I think it's forklift forks or a big 4x4 four four beam. Oh, yeah, you something. can almost see like a oh, it's steel crazy. or something. So yeah. this is going to take some love. And what we might have to do eventually is right here where it's storing so much tension. We might have to do a relief cut there. But I'm going to try and work that to where we don't have to cut any holes in it. Because ultimately, it's better if we don't have to cut the metal. It's looking good. We got that side. Yep. Pretty much worked out. This side over here, I'm uh, hitting it with 80 grit and showing a lot of these low spots. Um, the bare metal ones are ones we're probably gonna try to pull. Yeah, the dents like that, we can wipe that. We've got some Evercoat filler that's good to direct to metal. It's good to 180 grit scratches. So we'll, you know, we're good. We're good on that side. canning right here. So the easiest way to eliminate that or to kind of leave the pressure, we've got pressure pushing out here and out there. So we've got a sty line right there. So what we're going to do is tap across the sty line. It's going to put pressure back into that bow. It's going to stabilize it. There. 
Wow. No more oil can. But we can do that. That's just super thin. Maybe an eighth of an inch of uh, skim coat of filler, and we're good to go. Yep. It's not bubbling anymore. Nice. Yeah, barely any pressure with the DA. It would just boop. Yeah. Nice. So we're getting there. We're, uh, I got this bedside left. Kevin's got all of the uh, stud gun work done. He did some over here. Looking good. Very, very manageable stuff. So finish up that bedside, then I think we're going to be wiping on filler here pretty soon, huh? Heck yeah. Okay, truck is ready to wipe down. What are we using here, Kevin? We're using acetone. It's a fairly mild solvent and it evaporates quickly, so we know it's gonna, not gonna stay down in the surface. We've got a big dusty truck. Rather than blow the dust out into the air and have it fall back down on the truck, I just like doing a quick wipe with acetone because it's a mild enough solvent where it's not gonna eat the paint that's on there and it's gonna get the dust off and it's not gonna interfere with my, gravity works, with my adhesion on the fillers. Now we're dust free and we can go ahead and wipe all the little spots. There's a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> the, the cab and the fenders and the hood and the roof look absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, whoever owned this truck threw everything they ever owned at the bedside. Or we're trying to get it in, but missed. Well, they use it for a truck, you know, and it was just a, it's a utility. It's a long bed, yeah. you know. It, people didn't look at them then like they look at them now. Now, their collector's items, their muscle cars, their trucks, their, their hobbies, there's a nickname for them and all that type of stuff. But once upon a time, this was a work vehicle. It's yeah. a tractor with doors. Get me to work in that. Right? <laughs> you ain't wrong. Still just blown away the fact there's no rust repair, which is, is fantastic. So clean. So, clean so we're going to jump in, throw some gloves on, help wipe this thing down. Then we're going to be smearing on some filler really virtually none needed a little bit up here but everything else looks great it's just these little things here that we're filling all over the bed sides well we think we got the truck completely done and ready for some mud we're going to address the hood and the roof here in a little bit right now we just want to get the filler in get that dried so we can start scratching on that and the goal is to get this thing into primer tonight yet Kevin went and grabbed some paint paddles, stir sticks, slapper dude dabbies. He's going to show us the proper way to mix Bondo, which apparently my way, just closing your eyes and smearing stuff, is probably not <laughs> quite as accurate. Also, he said, by the way, this blew my mind, cardboard changes your mix. It soaks in, what was it? Something scientific? It soaks in something in the catalyst and the resin that's in, because everything that's wet has resin, has solvent in it. So the cardboard will suck that solvent down in and it throws your mix off. So it's not accurate. There you go. Stop mm -hmm. using wobble pop boxes. Well, not even, the best. I, know, I know guys that use a piece of aluminum or a piece of glass. That's okay. fine because it doesn't absorb anything. Okay. These, I like these, because you tell them in the trash, once they're done, you've got a new clean mixing board. All right. And you want to be as gentle with it as you can. I made the mistake once of thinking I was being really efficient, threw it on the paint shaker to get it all stirred and blended in, which makes sense. But what it did is aerate it, creates a whole bunch of tiny air bubbles oh, in it. And so then you get, you get the... pinholes coming through. Yeah. So you want to let it relax. So the general rule of thumb, the actual scientific weight is 2% of catalyst by weight on your filling. If you don't have scales, which a lot of high-end hot rod shops measure by scale, so have consistency from batch to batch because they're wiping a whole car. 17 times but if you go first of all make sure that it's mixed in so we're pretty good go here they actually have instructions so for a two inch puddle you go halfway across for a four inch puddle you go all the way across for an eight inch puddle you go one and a half okay so we've got about a four inch puddle ish look at what i just did uh oh so this is Evercoat. You can get this stuff on the interwebs. You can get it in some parts stores. It's not, right. you know. No, it's easy. You can get I get it at my local jobber store. I can get it off Amazon if I want to. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. So I'm going to go kind of halfway across with just one stripe there. So I can take my time right now. It's not going to kick right there. Once I start to mix it, it'll kick. So I've got a little bit of time. I don't have to get in a panic. 
I'm going to get my spreader. And basically what you want to do, and I don't want to have that, get rid of that, because that's more than I want. So I'm just going to fold this into itself. I don't want to stir it. I don't want to do anything like that. The guy showed me a crazy technique for blending it. You cup your spreader and you do figure eights and it rolls a catalyst in super fast without putting bubbles in it. Oh yeah. It takes a little bit of getting used to to do. Yeah, I'm more of a bread dough guy. I sit there and knead it back and forth. Seems like it takes forever. And then your life on it, you gotta move quick. <laughs> well, yeah, you got six minutes if your mix ratio isn't too heavy. Here's the other thing about it. When you pile it up in a big dough pile that looks like a unbaked bun, it's gonna kick faster. So if you want a little more work time in your filler, spread it out super thin. Oh, It'll okay. give you another minute. The scientific term is exothermic. That means it builds its own heat. You rob it of its exothermic quality by spreading it thin. I've noticed that when you get big globs of Bondo, say you're done and you got a glob left on your, not a piece of wobble pop box, we wouldn't do that. But in the corner, it gets really hot <laughs> to touch. Yeah, it, gets, it can get 180, 190 degrees. Yeah. So a first wipe, there's a dent. A first wipe is a super tight wipe to get it way down in the, in the, in the crevices. Second wipe is for thickness. Boom. Well, I don't know, that's all we need for that. Clean up my edges and move on to the next dent. You Guy always want to make sure you're not covering up air. That's the biggest thing. That's the biggest reason scratches come back with body filler, is that you've covered up a bunch of air. Oh, okay. So that's the reason for your, your first wipe being super tight, super tight. Jam it down in there. Right, firm, firm pressure your first time going through. Right. And, and that'll we, also squeeze out air holes if you have any, right? Absolutely. Then yeah. we can come back and smooth it and make it look pretty. 90% of it's coming off anyways. We're maybe a sixteenth of an inch, maybe a little bit more in some of these places, but but we're not abusing this filler. It's polyester surface enhancement material. It's made for doing this. There's no shame in using plastic filler. It's a good product. When you do it three quarters of an inch thick or sculpt with <laughs> it, then that's the problem. But you know, we're not doing this. Yeah. And you know, I've done it. I'm. I'm not perfect. I've made mistakes, but when they come back and bite you, that's when you learn from them. Right. And we've all worked behind a vehicle where we've carved out crazy amounts of uh, body filler. Oh yeah, get the jackhammer. I gotta get this fender off. Oh, it's terrible. So I can feel this stuff starting to get. I can see it too. Yeah. yeah. You can see the viscosity change. So the, that's your stop sign. When you start feeling it give you resistance in your spreader, stop. Because if you don't, you're just going to make a mess. You're going to drag. See how it's starting to yeah. get grainy looking? Just putting more work into sanding and everything else. Yeah, for sure. And you can roll it out of there, and then you can introduce more pinholes. So this mix is done. Yeah. And not a lot of waste at all. Barely anything. No, not really. Yeah. Got some coverage. Nice. Yep. Very good. Just over here learning things. I was the Bondo master before I rolled in here. Now I got, I got some stuff take home with me that's for sure I'm gonna try to mix some up correctly I'm gonna keep my eyes open this time and grab a panel and start brushing the stuff on and uh, what's the dry time on this guy uh, one third of a wobble pop okay we can do that 10 to 10 to 15 minutes and then we can start sanding. oh that's time for three wobble pops all right <clears throat> and then uh, we're gonna start sanding and we still gonna try to primer this tonight we're going to do our best. We're going to see where we're at. All right. What time is it now? Uh, it's almost almost supper time. I think so. that's the wrong time. Oh. We don't know what time it is. That's okay. We're having fun. We're going to go until we can't stand it's and cool. uh, see if this thing is... What color is the primer? Gray? Yes. Might be gray here pretty soon. All right. This is a trick. I show you guys in my Patriotation videos, my Patriotation University course, but... This, as it turns green, it's supposed to be ready to sand. If you've ever worked mono, listen, hear that? Yeah. It's still a bit of resin on the top of it, even though technically it's ready to sand. So I'm taking acetone and I'm just wiping over the top of that. That gets that resin film off of the top surface. As soon as the acetone wow. flashes, now it's going dry. Now, no more smucking. So that's just a way to 
you'll burn out a, a piece of sandpaper. It'll clog up that. Gets paper. gummy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's just a way to save your sandpaper. It's just one of those quick tricks that uh, you know I've learned over the years, right? <laughs> nice. So this stuff is fancy. It turns green when you're good to go. This is this is still drying here. That's a really good indicator instead of you know just guessing and trying to sound like we normally do, but. This side's slowly getting there. We're gonna grab some 80 grit, just knock it down, then we'll be back uh, doing some blocking or hand sanding on that. But we're just gonna come over top and just, whoosh, you know, whoosh, off. Guide coat has been around for many, many years. Used to, people used to spray paint it on there. Some people still use flat black aerosol paint. I like the powdered guide coat because it doesn't interfere with anything. And when I block over the top of it, it's a contrast and it shows me where the low spots are. Oh yeah. So it's a great tool. So I'm showing all these tools. We got vacuum sanders, we got this and that. And there's ways to save money doing this. So this, I'm not even gonna say how expensive that is, but it's a necessary tool for the job. If you're on a budget, you can get this for seven bucks at Lowe's. This is a piece of foam. Is that the chalk tape stuff? Yes, this yeah. is drywall chalk. You can get it in different colors. This is graphite powder. Guess what powder guide coat is made from? Graphite powder. Huh. So there's our guide coat there. Does the same thing, right? I like buying premium products, but I remember when I couldn't afford premium products. I want to have the right tools. And I don't even call this a hack. This is just good information to have. I have actually run out of the, the high dollar stuff and put this in the packet so I can so I can continue doing the job. It's all about doing what you need to do to the surface. Bondo doesn't care. The sheet metal doesn't care. It'll listen to what we tell it. But if we can put something on there that's a surface analysis tool and it shows us where the low spots are, now I know. I'm not gonna guess at anything. I know 100% that this is a low spot right here because my graphite powder is still in it, right? So it's nice. the little things. Very cool. So Kevin's working away doing the finishing touches on the front fender up here and a little bit on the box. We're getting so close. You're so close. I decided to jump in here and start working on uh, cleaning up this firewall so we could scuff this up. A lot of this wiring I can eliminate. It ran the uh, NeverSpark box over here. We're gonna get rid of that. And uh, for example, this whole harness I don't need anymore. One's going to be oil pressure, which we're changing. One, I believe, is temp, which would have went around the block. And then we have the old existing ignition coil, which is going to be upgraded to a GM style because we want it to run right. So I think I can just unhook all of this. And later on down the road, you can remind me I did that because we're going to have to pin all of this out and find a 12 volt sourced lead there for the HEI that is fused. But for now, we can get this out of here. I could take this out of here. I've got the air intake box out already. I got the coal box out of here. All this vacuum stuff can go. We don't need any of this junk. I can get the heater hoses off. There's quite a bit that I can, can thin out in here fill Kevin's trash with, I guess. You got a trash day coming soon? <laughs> okay, Kevin, what do you think? Day one, we're gonna call it? Yep, I'm tired. My back is yelling at me, I'll yeah. tell you that. My, I feel like Popeye. <laughs> we did a lot of sanding today i'll tell you that we got uh we got a lot of work done though yeah. just one of those deals you get a couple couple dings done then you go oh there's another one well, here's the thing you know you think oh well, we can just fix it and then you see another little dent and then you fix everything else why yeah. would you leave one dent on the panel so you got to fix that dent and yeah. then you find another one and but it's why they call it body work i guess instead of body vacation <laughs> at some point we had so much white powder on the floor in here. It looked like a party at Charlie Sheen's house. I'm <laughs> kidding you. It was, it was something else. We got her fairly swept out, trucks blowing her off. Tomorrow, finishing touches and then we're primering. Yes, and yep, we got a few little corners to clean up here and there and we're gonna prime. While we wait for primer to dry, we're gonna get the rust off the roof, address that hood, both sides of it. Yeah. 
and just kind of leapfrog between the different things and get it up in the air, get the bed bolts loose, and um, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. This is going to be awesome. So tomorrow, primer. See you bright and early. All right, wobble pop time. <laughs> Well, good morning. Start of day two, we're at Kevin Tate's place, headquarters of Paint Education. The truck is still here. It did not roll itself outside and light on fire last night. So you know, we, we both <laughs> wish it did. <laughs> I walked through the door and Kevin said, please tell me I'm not the only one that's feeling it today. And man, I woke up this morning and it was like, arm pump. I was like, get to the chopper. I needed a lift gate to get out of bed. Oh, it was something. We sanded and sanded last night. Uh, Kevin already went around it early this morning doing some 120 over and some scratches. We want to show you this, this uh, what's this called? Evercoat yeah, coat it's glaze? Yeah, it's Evercoat product. It's called 440 Express. The way I used to fix pinholes was to come by and mix a little bit of filler up. We got some pretty good ones right here we can see, right? Those little black dots, those are air pockets in the filler. It just happens. Nobody's perfect. We can't all be, you know, it just happens. So what I would do would take a razor blade, mix up a little bit of filler, a little bit of catalyst, do a tiny little Bondo mix and smear it into the holes and, and let it kick over and then come back and sand it. And you know, that's a, a decent way to do that. It works. But this stuff, the product without any catalyst, which I kind of like because it dries really fast. So what we do here is we just kind of take the foam pad and smear it in. So no catalyst at all. No. Nope. Just straight on. And smear it in, let it flash. And it gets down, it gets worked down by the sponge into the pinholes, and then we just knock over the top of it with some 120 or 180, and there's no more pinholes. So the reason that's important, if you don't know body work, is that your primer that you're going to put on top is going to sink into that air pocket, and then you're going to see it through the paint. So on the drive over here this morning, I was just contemplating and thinking, first of all, I'm having a blast. It's incredible to work with someone like Kevin, who is just an absolute true professional and has so much knowledge and it's with any trade right whether it's welding or engine work or paint body or interior uh it's it's just a lot of fun and i've already learned a lot which is great so many different takeaways a couple i'll share is like mud work well kevin's bondo work makes mine look like child's play i need to be more aggressive i need to uh develop the area bigger um i've always traditionally done 57,000 coats. I've learned the right way, the proper thickness, um, adhesion, different methodologies. And that's really big. The other thing is not sweating the little things. Like I would have spent another day or two working out all these small scratches and pinholes and rock chips and things like that. And that kind of leads into my next big takeaway already is figuring out how to do this in stages or knowing your stages or having a process where before I would just like do all of the sanding and body work all the way straight through and then you potentially primer it if we you know sometimes we don't do that this Kevin in here we don't usually primer stuff and then color you know but here it's like no don't worry about that stuff we're just doing the dents then we're going to prime and seal it. Then we're going to come back and actually do the body work. So it's like learning processes and steps and things of that nature. And uh, we'll talk more about this as we get the truck into color. I want you guys to see this finished first. But Kevin has three big ways that you guys can learn this stuff. DVD, uh, on demand, and also has an online university. But we'll get you all those details. I want you guys to see this thing finished first. And then you might... Get the motivations to be like okay i think i can do that with my honda rubicons or whatever you got my old chevrolet my dodge pickup my jeep whatever so here's the plan today we're going to go around and tape this thing off wipe it down tape it off we're going to get this in the primer super quick then we're actually going to roll the truck outside and then we're going to start working on the hood and the tailgate the hood we're also going to paint the bottom so we got to do some rust elimination under that and then the tailgate is obviously two-sided so we got to figure out how nice we want to make this tailgate and go through that so kevin's working on taping right now and i'm working on this area on the cowl there's these stains in the metal you can't really feel them but obviously we can see them so we're not we know they're there trying to address that so 
taking it down with 80 and then using this uh, pad thingy SpongeBob looking doodabber works really good we got all that out so I'm gonna do the same over on that side all right we did all, all of our blocking on this truck with these actually mostly these next level blocks they're hard faced acrylic that's kind of the trend now and these are some of the best that I've found if you want to make a flat surface you got to use a flat surface to make it so now that we're flat our bodywork is good and straight. We're just going to knock the top off, do some feathering, things like that. So we're going to use these guys. These are soft sanders. This is Styline Corporation. This isn't styrofoam. It's what's called a thermoset plastic. It won't break down under thinner, but they're flexible until you put sandpaper on it. It's got a nice soft face. You can see the radius on the edge. Oh, yeah. of, there's okay. no such thing as 90 degree corners on a vehicle. Yeah. So if I'm using a soft sander and I want to get in this cove, well, Stylon has a shape that fits this perfectly. So I really like these for my finished sanding and for a lot of my wet sanding. But this is what we're going to use to go ahead and chase the, uh, the 440. And while I go get the primer, I'm going to put Derek to work. <laughs> He's going to go <laughs> find all the little flaws and sand them out with, uh, with, a little, with the Fisher Price soft sanders. <laughs> but these are really good. I love them. All right. Well, we are getting very close. Look at this bedside. Remember what that used to look like? Oh, it was fun watching Kevin do the metal work on that. So I've got a pinhole right here. Got to fill that in. I've got the others filled in. It's tacked. It's blown off. Just got to make a little mess right here. Kevin went and got his gun and the primer. He'll be uh, showing us how to put this stuff on here pretty soon and what it is. He did mention a 2.0 fluid nozzle which means we're putting on some stuff so i want to show you guys this uh some of you would probably assume, we're getting ready to spray that we've got there's dials and widgets and there's people in a control booth and they're pulling levers and hitting buttons <laughs> and all this stuff to make a beautiful air hose and there's laser beams and stuff and all this equipment here you know because kevin's been doing this for 30 years but he's going to show you that you don't have to have high super top dollar stuff you can make a lot of this stuff and it can get you close and then you could dial it in at the gun. All right, what do we got here? All right, so we got to know what air pressure we're spraying at. Every product has a recommended PSI, and we've got our gun. So these regulators, they work fine. They go onto the bottom of the, of the gun. I don't like them because they restrict CFM, which we need for today's thick materials, and they, it bumps into my arm. It makes it uncomfortable. I want to spray without this guy, but I still have to know what my pressure is. So I've got a homemade gauge here, because we're down here in Studio 54. This isn't even where I spray cars. <laughs> this is where we do our dance parties with the mirror ball. So <laughs> this is not really a paint area. So what I've got here is a passive gauge, right? Just some... Just, I mean, this it's is a 20, T and a and a uh, end to end connector. Yeah, it's twenty five dollars worth of stuff. So I've got it dialed in here, and check out my my cheese ball regulator. I don't even have a paint regulator on the wall. I've got a desiccant snake <laughs> for you guys if you got to scrub off some moisture with for a plasma torch or for painting. These guys, I got this one from Eastwood for just a few dollars. Here's my regulator. Just a simple ball valve. All right, so now what I do, trigger fully pulled, the gun set wide open, full fan. Now I can dial my pressure up, and I want to be at about 15 to 18 PSI. Perfect. Nope. There we go. So now I can take this big ugly thing off the base of my gun. Oh, just a temporary gauge. You just get rid of the whole thing. Absolutely. We don't spray through that thing. We don't need to. Now I've got my spray gun. I can confidently know what my PSI is coming into the gun, which we have to know. And now I can prime without anything interfering with my technique. Nice. I would agree because I've always used that gauge down here, and yeah. it's always in the way. It doesn't matter what way you put it. It's in the way. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got a four to one mix ratio here. I like these cups because you can see it from the inside. So oh, I, yeah. I can pour it. I like its chin off a little bit. And we're going to go, you can see those columns. I want to go up to about here. So I'm going to pour up to the first four with the primer and then the second four with the catalyst. That gives me my four parts to one part ratio. More pink. I was joking with Kevin yesterday. I'm going to call the truck Pepto. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at this stuff. 
And truthfully, this this stuff changes color too, and they're they're trying to make it simpler. Right, that does make so this will sound gray or green. I'm yeah, guessing. actually, no, it stays pink. But you know, the guide coat we were using yesterday. Mm -hmm. Well, this one's on the house. You got a pink guide coat. When you sand down into it, it's gray. Oh, nice. So I went to, I was talking. I went to the five. So that's okay. We got a lot of truck. We got a lot of truck. We're probably gonna mix a couple of times. Now we go up to the next five. And that's it. The older polyesters, they use a fiberglass hardener. And you used to have to count the drops and 12 drops per ounce and all that kind of stuff. And this stuff, just it just takes all the guessing out of it. This is uh, Ever, what is this called? This is Evercoat Superbill. Superbill, that's what I was saying. Yeah. yeah. And it says color changing guide coat technology. Nice. You are super high build. With the overmix pucks, I do it in my classes. I can hammer nails with them. Oh, wow. There's no porosity in it. It doesn't fracture or pull itself apart like a urethane primer. And it actually sprays nice. We're using a 2.0 tip just because we want, you know, we're going to put two coats on here and then we'll block. But each coat is about four coats of a urethane primer. So it's a super high build product. You can see that it's, it's real thick. Yeah. And because it's polyester, the same chemicals, the same chemistry as our body filler, uh, it's spray bondo. This stuff was brought onto the market to fix hail damage. Oh, wow. All the micro hail damage on a hood, you prep the hood and you hammer about three or four coats of this stuff on it, block it down and go. <laughs> and it's a permanent fix. It works really well. <laughs> I need to put a gallon in my shopping cart. I need that at home. So that's going to, we're going to just come over just the body work. It's not getting the whole truck, but it's going to take care of all this stuff. These little scratches that are gone. And uh, it's going to be fun. I'm going to follow him around, watch him spray, see his technique with this stuff. And, boy, more sanding. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. We <laughs> like sanding. <laughs> Well, he's mixing up another cup here. I am blown away with how little overspray there is with this product. It's so thick. Normally, this place would be full of clouds, overspray, getting all over the tools and everything, but this stuff just goes on and sticks. Old Pepto Bismol. Uh, got this box side cab, door and fender, and I think we're pretty well there. And then. Block sand. All right, so here's one of the beauties of this primer also. We missed some pinholes right here. So on my first coat, I can do that. Oh, nice. When I come back with my second coat, I know they're going to be filled in. I don't like to do that, but if I just don't address that, my next coat, there's still going to be pinholes. So that's kind of breaking the rules, but it also saves you from having pinholes come through. Right, yeah. Got to do what you got to do. Well, we've got two coats of this on where needed. I'm going to let this dry. I can't believe how good these bedsides are turning out. They were so beat up. 
I thought there was no hope, but they're looking really good. So is this side. Looking nice. And that will be blocking this out. And it's got a built-in guide coat, I guess. I'm excited to see how this works. But uh, I guess when you sand this, it starts turning gray, and we could see highs and lows with that. And then I think we've got to start working on the hood here pretty soon, which is going to need quite a bit of work. I think we're going to go ahead and take this hood all the way down to metal. So there's a lot of sanding here. And then uh, after I get it sanded, I'll probably come back with like a, uh, a Rolock, like a scotch bright one and uh, grind this out just like I did on the cowl essentially. And I started on the firewall last night, but we'll have to get in and keep scratching and cleaning on that as well. So I think we're gonna go ahead and try to shoot some color in there. Tape off the heater motor, steering, get the wiring out of the way and maybe spritz some color in there too. Oh yeah, love this. We're cut from the same cloth. I said, I don't want to push. You got a lawnmower? He said, yep. Come on, lawnmower. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Yep. Truck's in the bake booth. No, it's just UV drying. But anyway, well, that's doing that. I'm gonna start on the underside of this hood. There's two things I never got, fellas. Brakes and good batteries. And this one apparently was boiled. At some point, the uh, voltage regulator said all of it. And you could see that juice got in here and just ate it away. Otherwise, the hood is in great con Look at this. It's great. So I'm gonna get in here with a bunch of different Rolocks on this and just see what flavor seems to be working and uh, try to get as much of the scale out so we are going to be putting color under here as well i just think that looks really nice when you you know when you pop a hood down at bingo hall you want some paint under there and then we also got the tailgate which is in exceptional shape it's in really nice shape there's a little bit of a i can't even find it anymore. a little bit of a ding right, right there, there. Yeah. one here you know what's going to fix that one of those stainless steel caps and there you go. Yep. I think I have one on it. Look at that. <laughs> Boop. Fixed. All of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not really worried about the uh, ones up here. The face of it is beautiful. Hey, are you going to keep this? Uh, These are collector's items, man. I mean, it shows the, the history of the truck. There's Phillips screws. We can, we can put whatever, it back on. Whatever you want to do. I heard that he was a good guy. The, the bumper on this, the, the bumper from the factory had the, remember the old steel bumpers yeah, where they would put them in the bumper? Yeah. That had uh, Ken Hilton on there too. Maybe we just put it in his glove box for him. I don't know. There you go. Yeah. So that's the plan. Tailgate and hood. We're getting after it. You got this looking good, Kevin. It's getting there. So, you never really know what you're gonna do until you start digging into it. The work piece will talk to you. It'll tell you what it needs. So, the beautiful thing here is we've got original paint over top of original prime. This thing is in such good shape. So, if this had a couple of paint jobs on it, what I'm talking about next wouldn't work because we'd be digging holes in it. But for this right here, I've feathered this out with 180 and it's super smooth. So now we can come back with 320, and it's gonna be even super smoother. And these little changes aren't gonna be bumps that are gonna show through the paint. They're gonna be flattened out completely. So now we can do what's called a wet on a wet. We can use a sealer, and then we can go straight to color because it's so stinking smooth. The original paint in such great shape gives us that opportunity. If we had a couple paint jobs on it, like I said, we'd be stripping, high build primer, block the primer to flatten it out from the top down. This is already flat from the bottom up. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. So it saves us time. Yeah, so this and the hood should go pretty quick then. Yeah. Nice. I'm in here with the uh, Scotch-Brite and some wax and grease remover, trying to get all the nooks and crevices 
and any of the dirt and stuff like that that I couldn't get the paper into. Smoothed out a lot of the original Ford runs. My goodness, some of them was learning or having a bad day. Just didn't care. <laughs> I almost feel guilty for making Derek do this under the hood. I said almost making Derek do this under the hood because this is really kind of a crap job. <laughs> so sorry, man. Well, that's all right, man. It's, I don't mind at all. I always am just impressed when people do this with cars. You know, they have a beautiful paint job. They pop the hood. It looks like junk. Yeah. So this is just something we want to do for you guys to take it to the next level. Whoever wins this, when you pop this hood, you're going to smell wax and grease remover and Derek's sweat. Remember that. Nice, Kevin's trick here. Just go ahead and put a pop rivet in there. Yep. Keeps the paint out. So when you go to put your emblems back on, you're not hammering them with the five pound sledgehammer because who would do that? We've all done it, Derek. We've got the same kind of things on the truck for the F100 Custom. I'm sure we'll do that there too. Hood's looking great. That's all the mud it took. Little tiny thing there, here. Tailgate looks beautiful. These are going to go for primer, but well, first, I think we're going to eat some groceries and wet our back neck. Is that the plan? Yep. And then uh, Kevin's going to prime these quick up in the booth, and while he's doing that, I'll start working on blocking the truck down because it's my favorite, sanding. And my shoulders are definitely not sore from yesterday. <laughs> so Kevin's up in the other building getting prepped to put some primer down on the hood and the tailgate. I've got the truck rolled back at the shop here. I'm working on the roof first. I've got to uh, take this down to 180 and then 220, and then that'll be ready for tss -tss. And then the big job, blocking all of the Pepto-Bismol we laid down earlier. Kevin, bless his heart, already started working on this side over here, and it's looking really, really good. Again, the goal, we're, we're close to it, I don't know. He's got 14 clocks in there, but they're all different times. So I really don't know what's happening. But at the end of the day, we want to have these just ready to roll in the booth tomorrow and paint, and then we've done it. We've thrashed this together in three days. Man, I'm hoping we can make that happen because we still have reassembly. I mean, everything we tore off of this has got to go back on. We've got to fit the hood, the grill. The plastics, I mean, all that stuff has got to go back in the truck, so that's a lot of work in itself. But I'm going to keep on rocking here on the roof. Got about half of it done right now. Things are going pretty good. I'm excited to see color on this thing. Just wanted to show you guys how this stuff works when you block it. I've got the roof done, the cowl done, and the door done working over here. And here you can see it's just built into it. So we've got these three little spots here, so I'm just going to keep working see if they'll come out otherwise we'll just mark it and deal with it as we go we've got the bed sides left and i believe the passenger door and this and now we should be ready well many 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 moments later we're all sanded out kevin's got the truck outside you know polar with the lawnmower he's blowing that off and i am in the shop right now with the shop back uh, this is on the other end of the shop, and you can see how dirty it gets. So I'm trying to restore some sort of cleanliness in here, clean what I can. Still trying to get the truck into the booth tonight for primer, and then tomorrow we'll block again, and then color. Seems like if you do things right, they take a lot of time, I'll tell you that. Okay, we have finished step 59 of 74 and a half. Yes. Uh, yes. We're, we're fully sanded. Kevin's happy, which means I'm happy. The truck looks good, I think. It does, yeah. It's coming yeah. along. It looks a dang sight better than it did when it came in. <laughs> and it didn't look bad then. Yeah, no, it's it's just incredible every time I look at the truck how rust free this thing is. Normally I'd have this much time just into patching and metal work and all that stuff, but. Uh, right now, you're going to try to scratch the firewall a little bit and put, put some paint up there. Yeah, we're going to blow some paint in there so it looks pretty when we open the hood. And because I know you did the, you actually did an actual Craigslist rebuild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it'll look good with the blue uh, cylinder head and all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, it's just another little detail we can throw in there, right? Yeah, we got the Duplicolor uh, Dingle Ball and the Rust-Oleum rings in it and the whole nine yards. Yeah. Uh, the engine. So that'll look great. And then uh, maybe some Port 15 on the 
fenders in there or something. Yep. And um, yeah, it's gonna look sharp. While he's doing that, I'm gonna jump back here. What do we call this thing? This is from a thing called Al's Liners, and it's a it's a dangerous, dangerous thing. It's, <laughs> it's actually not. But these are bristles, and when you uh, when you pull the trigger, this is like a rotary sanding death tool. <laughs> So keep yeah. away from face. Got keep it. away from face. Wear some uh, eye protection and rock and roll. But it does a really good job if you're prepping for the inside of a spray and bed liner. So as you just heard, I've talked Kevin into doing a spray and bed liner because he can do that too. So is it Raptor liner? It yeah. yeah, Raptor liner. Not quite sure, but he might be able to tint that for us to even match the paint. It's going to look beautiful. But the idea is. If this is going to be, trust me, this is going to look shiny and nice and just really good. And you look inside the bed, it's like, what happened? You know, you got the ball to the five yard line. So there is a couple dents in here, but look, it's an old work truck. Okay. And I hope it keeps getting used as a truck. We're just going to put a nice bed liner in here, cover up all this discoloration and whatnots. And then whoever gets it, you can throw your canoe in the back or your bicycles or your dirt bike or your fishing gear. And you're not going to have to worry about scratching paint. So I'm going to see how many of these I can stick on my cheek. And uh, Kevin's going to try to simultaneously paint with all the dirt in the air. <laughs> We're going to make it happen. <laughs> this thing's pretty slick here. It's abrasive enough to like get all this dirt and junk and some of this flaky primer off. But it's not like digging, digging, creating more work. So... I think I'm going to kind of go through here quick once and then I'm going to come back and focus on more of the tougher areas, but I'm just going to kind of work in a grid, like a one by one grid, back and forth, back and forth, all the way through this 37 foot long box. The color's perfect. Yeah, I think it is. When I first opened the can, it looked a little bit on the yellow side, but I think it's good. It's, it's just that right color of off-white. Hey, look at this. We got color. Kevin's not baking. That's a... That's a <laughs> Fun, really fast way to uh, tape stuff off or items off. I learned that from Dave Gindy. Oh, really? Yeah, they do uh, that all the time. Yeah. Works great. It's fast. It's easy. And uh, there's our color. It's kind of hard to see, a little bit dark, but yeah. oh, it's going to look so good. Very nice. And then this is all scratched out. So we think all the dirty work is done. So we did not meet our goal of getting it in primer tonight, Kevin. But... We got firewall done, inside of the bed done. Yeah, yeah. Traded some stuff. And uh, we're still gonna have color tomorrow, right? So. We're gonna put color on the truck first. We're gonna get the hood and the tailgate down here while I'm spraying. You can be sanding that, get it ready for paint. The Perfect. bottom side of the hood's ready. It's got epoxy on it, ready to go wet on wet. Bam, 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 bam. And this thing will be shiny in one color tomorrow. Oh, that's gonna be really yeah. exciting. Okay, I'm gonna enjoy a wobble pop and uh, pick up tools, clean up a little bit, and we'll see you guys once again tomorrow morning for the final day over at the Paint Education Headquarters. Kevin, this is just incredible. He's helping in all the time and investment, tools and materials. Uh, this truck's gonna look awesome. See you guys in the morning. Hey, good morning, day three. Look where we're at. We are in the booth and Kevin and I have spent the morning taping, Roll the paper on. This thing is wiped down. It is virtually ready to rock. Kevin's getting ready to tack this thing, blow it off. And then uh, we're going to be putting on a white sealer first, right, Kevin? And then Derek gets to drink coffee while I spray <laughs> a lot of white material. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to see what this looks like. Did the math on the way over here this morning. We've got about 52 to 55 hours of bodywork and sanding into this and that doesn't include the hours that I have ripping it down and getting all the stuff off of it so in just a couple of days we poured the midnight oil into this thing 
And today is the payoff day. We're going to get to see some shiny color on this thing. So while he's getting ready for this, I'm going to go get ready to block the hood and the tailgate. I still got to get that done. And I'm sure we'll roll this out and then the second session we'll get the, the hood and the tailgate. We got it on the hooves. I actually took the tires off. Get it down nice and low. Uh, make sure we get the tops and everything like that. But You can make a short joke if you want to. No! <laughs> Kevin said you can make a short joke if you want to. Man, I'm just excited. This is always the fun part is to get to see your hard work pay off. So, here we go. Kevin's going to show us how not to dump half a gallon of this on the floor with tape. I learned this from somebody way smarter than me after I've been doing this for 30 years. I've got ladles, I've got little cups. So it's important that this edge is pretty clean. So I wiped it down with the rag before you guys. I tuck this tail under, I tuck that tail under, and I do that. And I make sure that this is stuck. My mix ratio is here. I'm gonna go uh, up to the seven, four, to one, to one. So now I can pour from the inside. And here's where the magic happens. It's not my magic, but it's still magic. Oh yeah. Look how nice that is. <laughs> Can't tell you how much pain I've wasted. Me too. <laughs> yeah, this was a this this is a game changer, man. This the, the light bulb went off for sure for for doing this. So now I pour up to the first seven. You read these mixing cups like you read a book, left to right, at least with the English language. So if I got a four to four four to one to one mix ratio, I got four parts sealer, one part catalyst, one part reducer. So I go up to the first seven because I wanted this much. My first column is sealer, my second column is catalyst, my third column is my reducer, and I've got a very accurate mix. So I wanted to say this to any of you guys that's ever wanting to be a painter or paint anything, you've got to know about this. This is for Exalto. Every paint product has what's called a TDS or technical data sheet. This is your Bible. This shows me mix ratio. It shows me what the different colors are. I've got three different colors for this sealer. Pot life, what that means. Additives, what you can do. Tips for success. Dry times. Gun setup recommendations. Yeah, that's huge. It's huge. Air dry times. How? When can I get on this? Can I force dry it? Yes, I can. How long does it take? Can I infrared dry? It's all the information that you need, as well as the physical properties of it, if you really want to get scientific nerdy. Your TDS is really going to help you guys. I, I've been doing this for decades. I keep my TDS on hand all the time just to reassure me that in case something goes wrong, I know how to deal with it. So where do we get these coming? So I can go to the website of the paint manufacturer and I can download them. I like paper. I'm old. But if you've got a smartphone, you can just Google it. You can go um, Paint Shop Pro TDS and bam, you got it on your phone. Bam. Nice. Super easy. No excuses. <laughs> so this is not typical, fellas. This is not your backyard setup, obviously. Kevin's been doing this a long time, but the main purpose for this is Kevin has an online university, Paint Education. We're gonna talk about that later on, but this is a big part of that. Uh, he's got a classroom set up over here, and there's so much to talk about with that. When the truck's got color on it, we'll come back and talk about all of this. It's incredible. It, you can make any color you want, pretty much, in the world, right? Oh, any color. Yeah. Literally, I can copy any color. We've got a color camera here. It takes an image of the of the color, and we can spit it out. I don't even need a paint formula anymore. That's <laughs> wild. You know, and you're right. All of this stuff is, you know, it's expensive. But I train people. I've got training contracts, and I need this. These are the tools of my trade in order, especially to do, but more importantly, to teach. So the only thing I'll say about it is this. You can spray paint really nicely with a super cheap gun and limited. I've done it. I've painted outside and got nice paint jobs. It's like this. If you've got a torque to yield cylinder head bolt on a new modern engine, do you reach for the impact gun and hope? Or do you get your torque wrench and follow the sequence? That's it in a nutshell. Right. This is my torque wrench. Yep, yeah, makes That's sense. Yep. Yeah. Okay, here we go.
Kevin, show us your trick here. Okay, everybody makes mistakes, everybody has stuff happen, and I'm not a beauty, I'm a 35 year veteran. This happens. You can't look splash from the top of the gun. So we loop our masking tape, we we'll just bridge that. So now when I come back, I can hit a little bit of sand people, which the seeker sets up, and now if we speed it out, we keep going. Nice. So between a fender and a paint down on is your ability to get yourself out of trouble. <laughs> there you go. All right, so we've got our color. It's that beautiful vintage Wimbledon white. It's four to one, single stage paint, four parts paint, one part clear. This is a cool custom trick somebody taught me a long time ago. If you intermix clear coat in with the last coat, we're gonna do both coats, but if you intermix clear coat in with it, it does two things. It lays out slicker and flatter, and it gives just a little bit more refraction, which is the light bouncing in the paint and then reflecting back. It gives it more depth. So that's what we're gonna do on this F100. We're using a three-part clear. It's in the family of chemistry. Everything's Exalta. How you do this, you don't mix your color and clear together. You gotta mix your color and mix your clear like I've done here. Then you pour them together because they're a different mix ratio. And then we'll stir them in thoroughly for about two minutes. Those are the rules. And then we can spray. Now we have Kevin's Wimbledon White. <laughs> Kimbleton White? Kevel Kim Kimbleton. Kevel yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to look great. Okay, Kevin's getting suited and booted. He's got the color mixed up, everything here. He's got the uh, cup on the gun ready to rock. So for this particular process in this paint, uh, Kevin's really big on safety, which I can really appreciate. It's not good for me to go in there without fresh air. He's got a fresh air hood. I don't, so I'm not going to be going into the booth, but we'll still get you some coverage on that. He's going to go lay down this Kimbleton white. It's going to look great. Two wet coats, right? Back to back. It's big truck paint. Yep. So that's going to be, it's going to go really quick, and then he's going to throw the heat on it, and pretty soon we're going to see a shiny F-150. Uh, I can hear him spraying in there. He's made some adjustments to the beep boops. I don't know how any of that works. It's amazing technology. While he's spraying, I'm over here. I'm gonna be making up more cups. So when he comes out empty, he could toss the other one. I can hand him a new one. He clips it on the gun, right back into spraying uninterrupted. Just trying to stay out of the way and help however I can. Someday I'll get a gun that's nice enough not to throw away and move to this cup system, which is really convenient. Sorry, Kevin. Sorry. So I found the torque limit on the cups. I don't think that's good. Maybe he won't notice. He probably won't know. He, he probably won't figure it out. Though. I gotta figure out how to clean this quickly. I got it pretty clean. Thankfully, there's chemicals around here. Clean paint. I confessed. So, Kevin, you're gonna be a little short on the last gun. That's how much I spilled. Actually, not as lot, not as much as I thought. A lot, much of it would be. 
But when it hits a flat surface, it looks dramatic. So um, now you know. Just snug. It's snug on these cups. You don't have to go 105 foot pounds on them. They'll seal. Hmm. The more you know. All right, guys, it has baked, it's risen, it's ready to look at. Let's take a quick walk around, then we're gonna unmask this thing, get it back on tires, get it outside, then we can really see what it looks like. But now I'm telling you, this looks good. There we go. <laughs> Kevin, you've done it again. <laughs> That looks so good. It looks good to be one color again. It does. This was such in terrible condition. It looks fantastic. Whether you're a Ford fan or not, if you're a Dodge fan, you're a Chevrolet fan, this is such a timeless truck, these old Fords. You just, you gotta love this thing. It looks so good. That little bit of clear really did make it pop. Wow. I mean, the shiny, the paint's shiny anyways, but the clear gives it a little bit more of a smooth reflection. And it, honestly, if you got a little bit of defects, so we'll do some polishing here and there, but if there's a few defects in it, it just helps in doing that. It makes it easier to polish. So for me, I'm always looking for what can I correct. We, we have one more opportunity after we spray the paint to get rid of little surface defects and stuff like that. So the clear coat added into it really helps with that. Nice. Very cool. Okay, we're gonna get all the, the paper and tape and everything off this, get her back rolling. And then I gotta get to blocking on the hood and the tailgate so we can get that sprayed up. Extremely happy with how this is looking. So now we're gonna roll the truck out of the booth, let it sit out here in the sun, and I've got to block that hood and tailgate and then we'll get that into the booth. And then this goes into the other shop and Kevin's gonna surprise me with the bed liner. Guys, I can't. I just can't wait for you guys to see this thing all done. It is beautiful. Okay, the hood and tailgate are in there, prepped. Kevin's gonna get that paint done. I'm back here in the bed of the truck. I am using a solvent here. And uh, I'm basically going to be scrubbing every square inch of this bed to make sure that it's cleaned and prepped. We're going to be putting a Raptor liner in here, but what's really cool is we're going to be tinting it to this now beautiful paint that we have going on. And as you can see, it's going to be coming up to this edge over here. And the idea there is to get stuff like that out that's been missed in sanding, pressure washing, and all the stuff that we've done to this already just to make sure that we've got a nice adhesion and the bed liner is gonna last for years to come. I can't get over this paint. It is just, I'm, ner I'm scared. I don't know what to do. It's too close to it right now. Guys got the bed cleaned out. That's pretty much all we can do right now until that bed liner gets sprayed in. Kevin's gonna do that. I believe in the morning I'm gonna run home get the trailer come back and grab this thing and then I've got reassembly hood tailgate all the front pieces the emblems the the grill and the tin stuff and splash guards and oh yeah don't forget that but we'll be back in the morning we'll see what this bed liner looks like and that'll kind of complete the exterior look once all this, see all this just looks so nasty now. Instead of doing a cheap drop-in bed liner, this Raptor's gonna look really nice. Well, we're back to pick up the truck and Kevin has finished the bed liner. Look at this. Look at the paint match on this. That's pretty awesome. It's really, well, it's the same paint, so it's gonna match, but I love that liner and 
Uh, I've actually, I just, I made a video for my YouTube channel, you guys, if you want to watch and see how this is done. It's a real quick video. It's just kind of a fun process to see, but uh, check out my YouTube on that. Yeah, it's actually interesting because we were just chatting. I have always avoided this because I thought it was just such a huge process, but he'll show you. You could do this in a couple hours at home. I did it in a couple hours and made the video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looks fantastic. And the great thing is, we know there's a couple dings and dents in here. We're not trying to hide anything, but look, you can't really see them, which is great. And now you can use this truck. You could slide in your tools and your fishing poles and tackle boxes and whatever. We got the hood on. Look at that. Got it all lined up and adjusted. It's absolutely gorgeous. He surprised me and did pour 15 over here. Yeah, we did. I don't know if you can see it. It's a little dark. I don't know if you guys know this or not. We have been putting in 12 to 14 hour work days since Thursday. And <laughs> I know none of us has said anything. Derek hadn't said it to me, and I have not said it to Derek. But there's been this weird contest happening as to who could be the springiest in the morning <laughs> when we show up when we both feel like a truck backed over us. <laughs> yeah. This has been a crazy thrash. I mean, this is about as much as you can do between two guys with a pick em up truck in a couple days. In a couple days, for sure. <sighs> to see this looking shiny and slick, it just, I don't know, man. It just makes me happy. Yeah, it looks great. This is going to be such a nice looking truck. We're going to have that bright blue, freshly painted 300 in here. We're going to have just tasteful chrome, not a lot. We're going to have some cast or aluminum in there. We got the nice aluminum rad going in. It's going to look sharp. It's something you can pop the hood open out of cars and coffee and feel pretty good about it. Well, and it's not a Windsor. It's not a 400. It's something unusual. And it's a 306. Yep. It's going to be plenty torquey and all that kind of stuff. I've seen guys drag race those engines. Oh, yeah. Bulletproof and super strong. So somebody's going to get a really unique vehicle. Yeah. Well, thanks again, Kevin. This looks really, really good. Well, there you go. We're not sure what day it is. Four, five, <laughs> 3.6. Yeah, we've been putting in 12, 14 hour days and <sighs> I was hoping that you would give out on me, but you didn't. Now, I got a couple years on you, but, yeah. um, but I, was, I was trying so hard to keep up. I told my wife, I said, he's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> we put the work in, guys, for sure. I mean, it's about as far down and back up as you can go in three, four days on a truck, I think, paint-wise, body-wise. Yeah. I mean, any, yep. any farther, we would have been in trouble. And I there think. was so many small dents that that white paint hid. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to be honest with you. We started into this, and it was like, well, we'll put some bed caps on it, and we're just going to. And then Kevin kind of, well, we can get that. We can fix that. Because that's, I got to mention, this is important. I twisted Kevin's arm to do this truck because this isn't his normal um, forte. Kevin's work is extremely good. I mean, you got Cetane, you've got Jaded, you've got the Zed Sled. He painted the famous uh, Copperhead C10. For, all for Stacey, yeah, yeah, all yeah. the vehicles on truck. His paint work is phenomenal. So for him to go, okay, we're gonna scratch this and shoot. I appreciate that a lot. Well, thank you for saying that. It's very humbling to to hear those words. But you know, not everybody can spend six, I can't remember how many weeks, but it was weeks and weeks and weeks to paint that Copperhead truck for Stacy. Right. And then he had he reassembled it and he built the truck. I did the paint and you know straightened some of the body panels, but it was a long process. And we had, oh gosh, we did a car called uh, Jaded, a little 66 Mustang, yep. and we had 4,500 labor hours into building that car. <laughs> so n n my point is this, yeah, we can do that. Anybody can do that quality of work but yeah. not every vehicle needs that right that's exactly right and i think and don't be intimidated by yes we used a paint booth and i wanted to do that because i wanted this to be a higher echelon for whoever wins this truck but you could have sprayed this in the backyard or a lean to or a shed or yeah. a garage or make your own paint booth or so as, as derek is actually going through my training and as he goes through my training one of the things that i'm i'm impressing upon him as i do all of my students is what we have to do as technicians is make the paint happy. So it mm -hmm. doesn't really matter if you're in a booth or not. If we can make that chemistry happy and control a little bit of dust and dirt. When I was a little kid, I used to hose down the grass in uh, just outside of our garage and watch my dad paint cars outside. And he got nice paint jobs. So again, all we have to do is make the chemistry happy. And um, you know, I hope 
that's kind of solidifying in your brain. And you, yeah. you know what you're doing anyways. Yeah. You know how to do this stuff. But No, hearing the importance and, and reinforcing the importance of temperature control and environment control and just do the little things that to make the chemistry happen was yeah. big for me. And the other huge takeaway for me was um, you, you mentioned peeling the onion back just a little bit at a time. Just yeah. don't get overwhelmed with the project, which is I rolled this in. I'm like, oh, my gosh, Kevin, help me. We've got... <laughs> There's three days we need to get, and you're like, we got it. First, we're just going to start with this. That's yeah. all we have to do. Okay, now all we have to do is this, and then so on. Now, he mentioned I'm going through his university, which I am, his paint education university. Uh, went through some modules yesterday. Phenomenal. And I'm bringing that up because I am extremely lucky, and I understand that it's very humbling to spend time with Kevin personally and, and do this in person, and obviously not everybody can have that opportunity. But... He took his skull and shook it out into this university, and you can learn just the same, and for some people even better than in person. You've got, you can stream on demand. You could buy your DVDs if you want. Yep. You could buy course meal, buy meal if you want to spend a couple bucks. I've got a video, it's Cab Corners for 10 bucks, and it costs, what, $4 or something like that to download, and, and you know, so there's all kinds of training, and there's free stuff too, but, but you know, we've tried to have something for everybody. The main Paint Education University course, it's a couple hundred bucks, but you know, it took me a year to build it, and it's four and a half hours of solid lesson with tests. You get a Paint Education certification at the mm -hmm. end, and baked into all of it, all of it, is tech support. It's, it's what I live for. It's what I've, I've finally figured out what I want to do when I grow up, and that's be um, somebody that helps people get through this process. So. That's, that's really awesome. He showed me an interaction he had at World of Wheels. Someone went through the university oh, that was neat. Yeah. and had this beautiful Buick on display. I would have never, if you would have said this is his first paint job, I would have said liar. No yeah. way. Yeah. No way. It was gorgeous, and the guy said, look, Took the course, came out with confidence, direction. I knew what to do, follow the steps, keep it simple, and boom, laid it down. So check out paintucation.com. Also check out uh, Paint Education by Kevin Tates on YouTube. Is yes, that, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's got a bunch of stuff on there, free stuff. You can go check it out. Actually, you could watch him put this bed liner in and some other stuff as well, so make sure to check that out. Well, and I also want to say, while we're shaking each other's hand, I, you've been so inspiring with your channel, what you've done, and just making it easy to watch. So I'm going to try and take a page out of Derek's book and, <laughs> and, and make my content you know, uh, as easy to watch as yours is. So thanks for that, man. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Appreciate it. So let's get this thing loaded up. Back to Vice Grip Garage. We're going to put, uh, I guess we got to put the rest of it together. I might even have talked to you into helping a little bit with some. I got something to do. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for watching. Appreciate you so much. Hey, be sure to stay tuned. We've still got to make this thing run. We've got to make a drive. We've got chassis brakes, tires, wheels, exhaust, all of that, and we're running out of time. As a reminder, you can win this truck now through March 15th. All you have to do is go to vicegripgarage.com every $5 gets you one entry for a chance to win. Yes, my Canadian friends up north, that includes you as well, unfortunately with the exception of Quebec. That's just, that's just the way it is. And as a reminder, it's not volume. Just grab a cheap sticker or something like that. Also, for rules, regulations, no purchase required, all that, you can also find that at vicegripgarage.com. Thank you so, so, so very much. And another big thank you to Kevin for all the help. Could not have done this without him. We'll see you guys very soon.